First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, and thanks for joining me for another booty and leather care video. Today we are going to be reviewing arguably the world's finest shoe and leather care products, and if they're useful uh, or even necessary uh, in taking care of our leather goods in the hobby. This is not sponsored, um, but uh, it's sort of being someone who's really into like gear and kit and taking really good care of things. Uh, I've learned about uh, this Saphir brand of products. It's French and I've been blown away with it. It is, it's not cheap. Um, it's considerably more expensive than what you're typically going to pay for uh, leather care products. You know, in Company D and all of our previous videos, we're big fans of Obanoffs. Um, it's affordable, it's accessible, it's natural. The results are fantastic. It's absolutely reliable. And I'm sure out there you probably have your own preferred brand for caring for your leather. Uh, as I say all the time, it's it's just important that you, you take care of leather. Make sure that it's, it's cared for, it's nourished, it's protected, it's stored well, and it provides uh, the results and service that you're looking for. And so I thought I would do this um, review uh, because maybe many of you don't know about this and or if you did, maybe you're kind of waiting for someone else that you're familiar with to kind of share their thoughts and feelings um, on this product line because uh, it is probably twice or more than twice as expensive as most of your other leather stuff. Um, this um, uh, gold metal uh, black cream is... I think $20, $21, and this sort of bargain basement uh, boot cream that I usually keep in hand because I don't use much of it um, is $4. Um, and Meltonian uh, is a step up from whatever this is, Scout Boot Care. Yeah, this is fine. Um, Meltonian, I think, is about like $10 um, a can. I think you get a little bit more. Um, that's a little bit nicer than this, uh, but this just blew me away. Um, all these products have just completely just blown my mind as far as how well they work and how completely different they are in many respects um, as to the way that they care for and interact with leather. And there's tons of uh, product information available uh, out there on uh, the internet. Uh, Kirby Allison with the Hanger product Project has done numerous reviews and you know the people who win world, com uh, world competitions in shoe shining, this isn't their go-to kit. So um, let's talk a little bit more about um, our leather care. First thing, the other thing, first sergeant, why do you keep talking about leather care and, and caring for your, your, your brogans and your boots so much? One, it's, it's important. We have a lot of leather gear in reenacting. Um, pretty much whatever time period you're working in, you're going to have leather and you want to care for it. And that spans whatever your, your budget is, whether you have um, higher quality gear, custom made gear, or even if you're, if all you can afford or all you're starting with are the, the sort of the, the cheapy import stuff that you buy from a sutler. With the proper leather care um, and maintenance, you can make, you can make the most out of those and get the most longevity out of your leather products. And this is also another one of those things and kind of like the whole, the whole idea of this channel is that we're sharing knowledge and we want to start conversations. Um, we're always really careful to say like, hey, this is how we do it. If you do it differently, have a conversation and then ask everyone in your unit like, hey, do you know that we do this thing this way? Um, that's what we're here for. It's just kind of share that knowledge and start conversations so you can ask questions. Um, there should be people in your unit, veteran reenactors, who can walk you through how they care for their leather whether you're new or you've been doing this for a long time and you've never really thought twice about it. Because um, sometimes there may be an impression where you need to have ragged gear, and so you're not going to be thinking about it. Um, but our general season has kind of wrapped up, so this is the time of the year that I thoroughly clean and inspect and repair uh, all of my gear and get it ready for storage. So as always, when it comes to leather, um, cool, dry place, check it often. Uh, leather needs to stay dry, otherwise it's going to mold. And um, you definitely don't want to store it dirty. And one thing I didn't cover in our last video, um, how we clean leather, just using saddle soap. Uh, my booties at the time weren't very dirty, so I didn't use a lot of saddle soap. If you're just doing like a maintenance clean, you don't need a lot of it. Um, but if your booties are hammered, you're going to want to work up a heavy lather of saddle soap and wipe it off as you go until essentially your rag comes off clean. But you just don't want to, like, you never want to have your leather 
uh, wringing wet or sopping wet. So uh, we start uh, before we do any care product um, use, we thoroughly clean our leather and allow it to dry thoroughly. Um, the other top tip, I, I, I can't stress this enough, like if you want your shoes feeling comfortable and looking good for a long time, shoe trees, uh, it, it's fantastic. Um, Keep, on, keep Store your shoes in, uh, with shoe trees in them and you'll be happy. Um, there's tons of varieties available on Amazon and they have some really nice uh, fancy um, sort of like fancy pants shoe trees that are not much more than what I paid for on these ones on Amazon um, at the Hanger Project. So if you're really, if you get the bug of the fancy stuff, you can learn more about it um, there too. So like I said, none of this is sponsored, but I just kind of want to walk you through it. Uh, this one I have already cleaned, oiled, and blackened. Um, I'm not sure how much is going to show up. I don't have like a pro lighting rig. And this one in my right right here is just clean. Now with the boot cream, you're not you're, you're not going to get a high you're not going to get a high shine, right? You're just going to uh, sort of rejuvenate the color, even out any discoloration or scuffing that you may have had on your on your leather gear, whether it's a belt or it's your uh, your booty here. So now that we have our clean boot, we need to oil it. And to do that, I am going to use the Saphir uh, Rejuvenator or Renovator. And this stuff is incredible. It is uh, mink oil based and the smell is incredible. This um, smells and feels like um, like cosmetics, um, like a really nice face cream. It has all kinds of different natural oils in it. Um, yeah, this stuff, it's, it's so supple and it absorbs so evenly and so cleanly. Um, I, just, I just use my hand, I take small dabs and I will work it into the leather like I would Obanoffs. So we'll get to oiling this. Um, the Renovator, I think, again, it's like $20, $22 on Amazon. Fantastic stuff. Um, and then the uh, Black Cream was another 20 bucks. And then the other thing we're gonna talk about is the uh, Soul Oil. I mentioned that they make products for Soul Care uh, in our How We Clean Leather video. And I've been experimenting with it because um, this this is this was like twenty five dollars for this little bottle, um, and the other thing too is to keep in mind like our the soles of our shoes are made out of leather, so you need to be cleaning and caring for your leather soles so you can get as much longevity out of them as possible. And what the Soul Guard does is um, it saturates the sole and provides um, nourishment as well as water protection. Um, so that, you know, if you, these get wet, the water will wick away rather than being absorbed um, and attacking the leather over the long term. So I'm going to zoom you in a little bit and we can clean our booties together. Now, whenever we work with leather, we just need a few basic tools when we're cleaning our shoes. Uh, we'll need a couple brushes. So we'll have a uh, clean brush that's just for oils, no colors. And then uh, we'll have a uh, shoe brush dedicated to the color of cream that we will be applying. In this in case, I only use um, black shoe creams. So this, uh, this is for the cream. And then since I will be applying the uh, natural leather sole oil, uh, I'm going to use one of these um, leather dye daubers. Since we already do a lot of leather care in Company D, I have a bag of these in the craft room. So we have our leather cleaned, we have our shoe tree in, and we are just going to start oiling our shoe. Now this, this stuff is expensive, but it goes a long way. It just, I don't know, it's its one of those things that I've, I've never worked with a leather care product that is so vastly different in many respects than just about anything out there. And 
I've pretty much worked myself all the way through the oil care section of just about any leather supply store. And you just rub it in. Like I said, this <clears throat> this is just sort of like a demonstration in case you're curious of the fancy stuff. You don't, while I personally have been blown away by this product, it's, it's not necessary. The only thing that's really necessary is that you are routinely caring for your leather goods. And it doesn't matter if it's high end or entry level. You should be caring for your stuff. Um, oiled leather is going to be softer on the feet. It's going to keep your feet drier. And however much money you invest, it's going to help your shoes and your leather last as long as possible. And <clears throat> you can see I'm not, I'm not using a ton of stuff. And when I kind of run out of what's on my hand, I just keep working it in to that leather because leather is just like skin if you get dry hands odds are your boots are going to be dry at some point too if you work them too hard and you don't nourish them so <clears throat> my uh my booties are well loved and cared for so i don't need to apply very much if yours are if this is the first time you're caring for your leather you're definitely probably going to let it sit for a little bit. It's probably going to absorb everything that you've put into it. And then uh, you'll probably, you may most likely need to reapply. But again, you don't want it saturated. You just want it nourished. Just like um, if you put lotion on your hands, right? You don't want greasy, slimy hands all day. You just want enough so your hands absorb it. <clears throat> so we are now done with the renovator. And we are going to go to the boot cream. Before we get there, I'm just going to give my booty a quick buff with my oil and cream, my oil only brush. You don't want to cross contaminate. And I'll try not to fling my stuff everywhere. And here's the other thing too. Um, <clears throat> When you're working with shoes, you don't want to just like, I don't know, do these baby scrubs. You don't want to be super aggressive, but like you're, you're, you're buffing, right? Because you, you want, you want heat you want, you want a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, you're working with the leather. You're not just, I don't know, whatever this is. So there's a little bit of technique and knowledge to be had knowing how to use a brush. So now we are going to the uh, Medal d'Or Black Cream by Saphir. And this stuff is also so different from everything I've used before. You get that ever so faint um, smell of turpentine. And this again, full of natural oils. Um, this is, um, it, I don't know, it's, it's, so, it's so fluid and... and lotiony it's so different from any of the other boot creams i've ever used so i just have a scrap rag i'm going to dab a little bit on and then i'm going to start by working it in and the other thing i've noticed um since this product is so high end is um you know if you ever uh, blackened shoes or leather before, you know, even if you, uh, wrap your finger, uh, you're going to have like, you're going to have dyed fingers and some of the stuff, you know, like that, you know, Kiwi stuff, which for, you know, this sort of application, you should always try to stay away from, it'll really dye your finger. Um, this stuff, uh, washes off really nicely. And I think maybe that turpentine might have, 
something to do with it. And um, maybe you think, like, oh, what's turpentine doing in it? Turpentine, um, if you go back in the old receipt, uh, receipt books, uh, was really common in uh, a lot of products. Uh, Leather Care, our uh, old video on a lacquer for small arms, which is also like an you know like a 19th century version of Snow Seal. It also has um, turpentine in it. And uh, Captain Whitehall has used uh, that lacquer for small arms on his uh, boots quite a bit, and his feet don't get wet. Again, just working it in there. You may, you may be asking, oh, did Civil War soldiers actually take all this time on their gear? Like, well, they didn't have this fancy high-end French stuff. Um, but no, there were absolutely times uh, in diaries where soldiers had to care for and clean up their gear. Remember, if they neglected to care for their gear and it wore out before the next issue, they were personally financially responsible for its replacement. And soldiers still had inspections, they still had parades, they still had formal events, um, you know, being a Civil War soldier, you know, wasn't being on a campaign 24-7. You still had lots of regular military duties and expectations. So there we go. Nice, light, even coat. You can kind of hit your fronts a little bit. Now these, as far as I know, were never, ever brought to a high gloss. So if anyone actually knows of any documentation about people trying to get these like Oxford level shiny bright, um, let us know down in the comments. So we have our cream evenly applied. I'm gonna give a nice inspection to see if I missed any spots. Still a little light down there by the sole, a bitty dab. There we go. So nice and blackened. And now we're going to take our dedicated shoe brush. And then we are going to buff our shoe. And again, if your if your particular shoe has been super neglected, you may have to do this multiple times. Uh, but you don't need a ton of this stuff. That's kind of not the purpose. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, like if your um, booties are practically ruined, you may just be at the point where you need to re-dye your, your leather. But this is just to kind of even out the tone and the appearance of the leather. It's all about having reasonable expectations for the products that you're using and using them as they're intended. And then pay attention to the direction of the grain of your leather. The, see, the biggest thing that separates... So, why why not use Kiwi? Because Kiwi is... It's all full of petroleum byproducts um, and waxes. And the Kiwi stuff, it, it cakes onto your leather. It, it cuts off um, the oxygen and the um, it can trap moisture. And it can also dry out your leather. The kiwi will, um, it'll break down, it'll crack. Um, it's, you want to make sure that whatever products you're using on your leather continue to allow it to breathe and be flexible. And that's why um, you want to stick with uh, creams 
um, were necessary. Now, that's not saying there's no place for Kiwi. Um, there are certain, you know, like modern military where you need an absolute, like, intense shine. And those high shines on, the, on like, patent leather and cordovan leather, um, th that all comes from building wax upon wax upon wax upon wax. And so there is a place for it, but for the most part, genuine leather, leather care, um, there's uh, sort of a controlled space for that sort of stuff. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and treat our soles. Now this one just says it's 100% vegetable oil. So I don't know if that just means it's just, I don't know, a shoe version of what you probably have in your pantry for cooking with. Um, but it's pretty neat. There's other reviews on there on, on the internet that you can see. Um, I honestly think that if you just um, oil your soles with whatever leather product you already have, it probably does the same thing. But I think it's more important to remember uh, the reason for... Uh, just, just remember that you know we, we need to treat all the leather. And this stuff requires uh, several applications, uh, usually like two or three. And you don't need a ton. You just want to make sure you have even coverage. And since I have hobnails, that's where one of these sort of uh, leather dye daubers comes in real handy. So I can work around all the hobnails with minimal frustration, getting around the heel plate. Front of the heel. You can even do the outside too if you wanted. And this this just absorbs to sort of a, a natural oiled matte color. So then this is supposed to dry for quite a while in between applications. So for the most part, aside from oiling our laces before we relace our booty, we are done. Well, thank you for joining me on this product review. Like I said, I don't think you need to rush out and buy this stuff unless you like trying new things and maybe you just like high-end stuff or you're just curious. Um, but as far as a necessity, I would say this isn't necessary. If you, There are lots of other really good quality uh, leather care products that are affordable and much more accessible uh, than this French stuff. I, I love it. I'm totally sold. Um, I'm pro I'll probably keep using this. But for all my day-to-day -day stuff, I still use Obanoffs on my everyday shoes and a lot of my other leather stuff. So this is, I guess, kind of, I kind of save this for the stuff that I really, I want to be extra fancy with. Um, if I had to recommend of the three, because we also have the Soul Guard, I would say if you wanted to try one to start, I would recommend the, the Renovator. I, I think the company says this is the one they sell the most of. And this also will give you the widest range of application because you can use it on all kinds of leather stuff. Um, and it's, it's really cool. I, I like it. Um, the cream, yeah, maybe, um, it is a really, real. it is the best boot cream I have ever used, uh, but there, there's other good stuff out there that you can find at boot stores and, um, you know, like sporting goods stores that will get you pretty close to the same thing. This thing is all fancy pants, so it, it shows, but as long as you, you buy a quality boot cream that's natural and allows the leather to breathe and doesn't cake uh, or overly fill the pores of your leather, you're fine. And then we come down to the sole guard. This was the most expensive thing. I think I spent like $25, $30 for it. I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you look at other uh, YouTube reviews, they pour water on the sole after it's been treated and all wicks off. But I think just about any leather treatment on the soles of your shoes would do the exact same thing. So while this is, you know, neat, I I don't think I'll buy it again. Um, I'll definitely use up the bottle because I spent the money for it, but I don't think you need to rush out um, and buy it yourself. The The big thing is, you know, everyone, if, if you're thinking like, oh, I'll take care of my leather. Well, a lot of people also forget to take care of the soles of their shoes, especially when they're going away for storage because uh, you don't want them to dry and crack um, and make you have to prematurely either resole them or buy a new pair. 
So make sure that you, you care for all your leather um, equally. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments down below. Uh, this is again just another great reminder video that um, as you know for you veteran reenactors out there, this is just another area for you to to share your expertise and your experience with new reenactors to kind of touch base. Like, hey, where are you at on you know caring for leather? Um, what's your leather toolkit? care kit look like? How can I help you? Can I answer any questions? Just like everything else that we do in our videos, it's about sparking a conversation. And for all you new people out there, just remember, the more you care for your gear, the longer it'll last, the more comfortable it'll be, and the more pleasurable reenacting experience you will get with your gear when it works and it's reliable. So um, thanks for liking and subscribing. Uh, if you think anyone can benefit from benefit from this video, please feel free to share it. And uh, to stay updated on all of our future videos, make sure you click that notification bell. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next time.